Hey guys, welcome to Gavi Gaming TV. Today we are in Worlds Adrift Island Creator. Yes, the game I've been going on about for quite a while now. Um, I'm linking videos to and stuff. I just brought out an Island Creator. It's on Steam. It is free. Go get it and try it out. It is awesome fun. Um, basically, what it is is you can create a floating island if uh, it's good enough and enough people like it and the developers like it it'll end up in the game this is my effort I have been on it for several hours like seven or eight hours maybe um, and uh, I like it, it's cool I have messed about with it to see what it's like to play on um, hence this mode here you can go in there and see uh, what you created, what the scale's like, because scale's really hard to figure out whenever you're actually in the mode that you are building stuff, which I'll show you in a minute. So this is like essential to figure out, okay, that's a little bit too big, or oh my god, that's massive, or wow, that's really tiny. So uh, the fact that you can come into this and do that is really, really handy. And some of this is auto-generated, but a lot of it is hand sculpted by me. So, how did you do it? I ask. Well, this is my island. There is actually a day night cycle up here, so you can change it to whatever you like. And I have the clouds on, so it looks absolutely beautiful at the minute. And you can pause that, fast forward it, or what have you. So, if we go into the options here, knock off the clouds, we can see what's going on. So this is my island, which is three of the starting things that you get, and I'll show you them in a moment. As you see, it is jaggedy, it is holy, it is all over the place. There's caverns, there's caves, there's little nooks and crannies everywhere. These have mostly been generated by the generator and then hand sculpted by me to get them how I like it. Um, for instance, all of this was open along here and um, was a lot deeper back so I got in here, sculpted it, carved out a cave you know I did this little section here just to make it a little bit more interesting and then I came along here how do we mess about in here as well I'm not going to show you everything because I want you to you know explore it yourself so I'm not showing you the entire island just this little starting you know this little beginning section here so you know I've made these little hills and mountains and all this sort of stuff. Most of this was flat when I created it. Um, slightly offset, that one was higher than this, and then that bit over there was higher than this one. But the land was basically flat, and I've gone around and sculpted and created and mucked around and laid things out. So as you can see, you can lay trees, ruins, um, you can put the grass down, you can paint the grass in the mountains, and, all that, and I'll show you how that works in a sec. So to get down to the ground you hit the play mode, spawn your character you know you hit that, click it where you want to spawn and you can run around and test everything over here is new island, load, save upload it to Steam Workshop as you see I've got mine up there already um, that one was so that I could actually get it off my laptop onto my PC because I was doing it on my laptop this morning so I had to upload it to cut it in here and this is what it's up to these are the only two things on my workshop because I very rarely use Steam Workshop. So, how I can hear you all screaming, the hell did I do this? So, if I go over here, click new map, fingers crossed this works, yes. As I say, this is like a, a beta sort of thing, so it has a lot of bugs in it, and they are working on making it improve and getting it better. So, you start with this, click on it, you get your usual sort of controls for building stuff move it left, right, up and down there are limits to where you can go as you see there, red box for the bottom I'll whack it over there, red box for there, so you get a fairly big size to work in but you've got to again think about scale so this is what you get, you can obviously change its angle to dangle you know, so this is basically what you start with. 
here you can see you can change its radius its bulbousness and then the land height now the land height is is flat at the minute on top um, yeah, let's get down here. as you can see it is flat that's it on the edge flat as a pancake so whenever you change this land height thing that tells you how high the terrain is going to be generated so if I leave it like 21 say 21 meters high is the highest the land will be generated on this land and then cave amount this will adjust how many caves gouges holes and whatnot gets put in the bottom of it will knock that down quite a bit and then you'd hit generate and it will create an island on there you can add other bits, another one of these, half ellipsoids spheres, subtract spheres, so you can put a sphere in and where that sphere is it will cut out the sphere same with the capsules, the cubes and then you can add ellipsoids, the cubes and that one, so we'll chuck a box in which is here bring it up uh, dump it there we'll make it 40 yard high drop it there uh, what else can we add? add a cylinder oh, this might be a bit hard to hit now right, hold on for water. bring that right up out of the way we'll put that back there ok cylinder again you can change all the lengths, radiuses etc we'll drop We'll drop that in there, spin it, and we'll shove it into there. Right. <coughs> so very random, very uh, quickly dumped together. So there. That is your extreme basic shapes. And again, global settings. So this uh, affects all the noise and the random scene and stuff like that and stuff. Right. So you can muck around with all of this sort of thing <coughs> and randomly generate modifications. So, do you want to hit generate and see what happens? Let's see what we create. Bosh. Kind of freaky looking island to be honest. Not bad. Got a couple of weed dents in there. Not many caves though, as far as I can see. You can go into the island and see exactly what there's a cave there. Look, another cave here. So you can see what there is round about. Now, you know, the cylinder's not really appeared. You can then go into these tools here. So you've got your terrain, which you see. You can clear stuff, generate, move things about you know and keep tinkering with stuff just to see uh, what you like and don't like the couch for some reason ended up down there so again you can move things about let's put this over here shall we right now it'll regenerate all of that right, there you go so there's another generation not bad, not bad at all. That's where to make a mountain ranger. So you've got your mountains and your hills and whatnot. And you think, right? Don't quite like how that all is. So you've got your brush types here. Again, radius, surface planetary, change the size of it. Power is how strong it's going to yank stuff out. So if I put that up to the and hit that and taking stuff away really rapidly, really harshly. Crank it down. Bit smoother, bit more control. Same with the add one tool. You come down there, you're basically slightly moulding stuff out of clay. Well, especially when it's this colour. And you're adding stuff and you know, generally doing what you want come down here hard small and just whack dig a hole straight through
maybe come against nothing, maybe hit something, you never know. There you go, come on the other side probably. And then you can go through the, smooth it out, muck around with it, you know, do what you want. Now, if you notice, there's also this tool here. Let's just go back to the hard tool. So, hard tool, same sort of thing, hard things, change the radius on it. This isn't actually the radius of the circle, it does add things in a weird way, so it takes a little bit of getting used to. Especially when it like, makes freaking big square lines like that. But you can go around, mould it how you like, spend hours just moulding away. Now there's another one here, which is the flat and height, so... Yeah. Let's go there. See this line? This is effectively your new ground level. So you can bring stuff up to it, like so. Or take stuff down to it, like so. Good way of making steps, or if you want to create a flat area quickly, you can use that, flatten it out, and then put whatever you want on. So the island moulding tools are pretty good. Um, I like them. Now, whenever you are working away, you'll get little bits like this. Just little bits of... Uh, island just floating, middle of nowhere. So for this they've got a remove orphans thing, I usually put it up to 4 or 5 just in case there's some bigger ones. Now you hit that it'll go through the entire map and bosh, get rid of any little um, bits that are in the way or just hanging out that you've deleted or you can't get rid of. That's really handy. Also you've got your smooth tools and your fixed seam tools Obviously, sometimes heavy editing cracks appear between cells and this, that, and the other. This will fix them for you, so it'll look really cool. Uh, smoothness, again, exactly what it says on the tin. If I go 2, 25, this will smooth out the entire island in one click. The intensity and the radius. So, if I hit that, it's going to go around all the edges, round them off, smooth them out, make it so it's not quite as jagged. And we'll see what this results. I've never actually done it this high before. <laughs> I've just used it for tweaking little bits and bats. Now, when you're doing the smooth tool, be careful because if you've made like I had on my island, like um, joins between like a cave floor and a cave roof, sometimes it'll get rid of them or it'll shrink them down quite a lot. So you've got to be careful with stuff like that. And as you see, it's, it's curved things out nicely. Uh, I think it's got rid of the the hole we put through it. Yeah, it does. So, as you see, some things it will get rid of if you're not careful. And uh, the hole we put in it has vanished. Yeah. And it's also created some more orphans. So, you know, everything you do, always get rid of the orphans when you do stuff like that. Because it only takes up space. So, once you've done all of that, you've got your land how you want it, everything's done, you can go into painting. Base is obviously your base colour, what the whole island's going to be. Top is the top layer, so you can have that as like it'll only paint on top. And then you've got your normal layers here, which can all be edited, and it's basically the top, the sides, which are the walls, and then the bottom, so like um, the ceiling, things like that. You've got multiple textures for these. Ground dirt, grass, grass too, leaves, all that sort of stuff. Which you can change. You can also change the tint to quite a few colours, which is pretty cool. It also gives you a clue of what the defaults are for stone, grass, sand and dirt. Again, very handy. So, all you'd do is, you'd set all that up. And then again, it's the same sort of thing as your land creating tool. So your radius, your strength, and then you just go around painting. Just clicking away, painting. Now you won't see much of a difference in the walls with this because I actually had mine set so it's pretty much the same as the base colour of the island. Or you can do the stone. You know, put some stone in there. As you see, it all gets put down. And um, because it's laid, you can adjust the strength and whatnot. So you can actually, you know, bring it through the grass or put the grass over the top of it, so it'll look like it's overgrown and stuff. 
really really cool very very handy if you're uh, messing about with uh, paths or you know things of that sort so once you've done all of that you then get to play things now this is where you sit up here you've got your complexity level that is how complex and how much stuff is on your island obviously that has to be kept to a a certain amount because if A is going to be uploaded to Steam Workshop B if they choose your map to win the game they don't want it sucking you know the player's PC dry who's looking at your island so they've capped that I don't know what it's at but you know it's set to a certain amount um, so you've got your surface alignment which again uh, place there with an angle of terrain randomize rotation so that just spins it around you can randomize scale and then um, allows you to paint objects by you know just clicking and continuously going which is actually quite handy and I wish I spotted that before because I need to do grass and I, I didn't realize that <laughs> but um yeah really handy so again if you say yeah come to grass you've got normal grass there you go hit the continuous you can paint it on but if you look at the complexity going up so that's why you've got to be careful with that because it'll whack your complexity through the roof and that's a lot of grass obviously you can undo that complexity goes right down again um, indent is how deep it pops it into the ground so best way of doing that is a tree as you see it's bog standard on the surface for indent that's now 0.63 meters below the surface, one point odd, etc. Simple, random scale, simple. And all you have to do is place it. Done. Click where you want it, and it's down. Easy as. And then it's the same sort of thing as with the islands. You click on it, move it however you want, rotate it, change the size. You know, all that sort of stuff. So that's that's really really handy. Um, and again, delete. You can change the radius so you can delete masses of things or just one at a time, depending on what you fancy. And there's tons of stuff to put down, so that like complexity will skyrocket really quick if you, especially if you're building a big island like I did. Um, it was a really, it was a bit too big to be honest, but um, again, scale is really hard to know unless you actually get your guy down there. So you've got loads of different types of trees, you've got grasses, you've got ruins. Now, some of these ruins I'd never seen before. I'd seen this sort of stuff here. A lot of you recognise the angel. Or... Do, do, do. Some of these sort of features from the videos that they've done. You'll have seen them being used as different things. For spawn points and things like that. But they've got gravestones in here, small fountains, large fountains, shrines, you know, loads and loads of things. And you can put down, and again, everything you can manipulate, sink into the ground, bend it, twist it, shrink it, whatever you want. Everything can be manipulated. And it can be done via numbers as well down there. Again, bosh, everything can be deleted. So, there's loads and loads and loads of ruins and things you can do. Stones, simple stuff like rocks and things like that. Or you actually have rocks themselves, small, large, desert rocks, cave rocks. Just so much stuff that you can do. Like, you can stick a big pillar in. Actually, looks like a foot from there, doesn't it? <laughs> like a rhino's foot. But, you know, so much you can do. So you can see why the developers can spend days and days on these. Just building out islands and whatnot. So, as well as doing that, you can also leave it to chance. So you can mass play stuff. So let's mass play some trees. We'll go... Yeah, it's a bit rock. We'll stick some red birch in. So... Maximum angle is say it's on that rock face there. 
it'll be the angle of attack and it goes will it follow it properly or will it say right there's nine degrees that's as far as you're going to go count how many trees you're going to chuck on it indent so it's four scale so it's draw randomized rotation yes surface alignment is it going to put it to the same as the train so click mass now there is an error where it selects everything that you've been messing with before and it does this uh, only way to get rid of that is undo save the map shut down the game fire it back up again and then do your mass place and that will work properly because um, it shouldn't be selecting everything that I've been playing with but it seems to do see none of that it is selected but it still seems to no it actually is but it seems to do it in the mass place bit so that might not be a bug it might be the proper way of doing it I don't know but I never noticed it when I first did it um, you know because I mass placed a few trees and whatnot so it might be a quicker way of going right here's trees grass what's it chuck them out there see what happens and then after you've mass placed it you can go in there and you can still manipulate every little pit every little bit that it's placed so you know you don't have to settle for where it places them you can go in there and mess around with them so it is really really cool that way and then obviously when you've done it you'll click play mode click a spawn point and there you are inside now this is what I mean by scale you come on and you have a look at the size of these things to see what's going on I mean look at the size of that, that didn't look that big whenever you're on the editing mode but when you're actually running around and playing the, you realise how big these islands are so that's why you've got to do that just to go on A to see the size of things and B see if it's playable you know have you created a cave where once you're in it you can't get out of have you created something just way too big to get over or just looked out of proportion so you know that's the sort of thing you need to look for and that's why the plane was in there um, so yeah that's basically it guys um, again keep the complexity down below 100% and chuck them up to the Steam Workshop it's really fun it is um, a really cool creative way of trying to get your stuff into a game it's a very simple program so they are working on it to make better stuff so to give you more um, um, layers and things to paint with and you know get rid of some of the bugs and make things a little simpler so they are still working on it but it is really really fun and I've really enjoyed it and as I say I'm going to make maybe a smaller island to muck around with and maybe you know get in there and make some intricate cave systems and things like that because there's a lot you can do with it by playing around Whoops. and you can knock yourself out in this and kill yourself knocking yourself out is really funny actually because the ragdoll is really fun in this but uh... yeah that is the world's adrift Island Creator. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, chuck them in the comments below. If you have any comments, chuck them down below as well. If uh, you haven't already, guys, please subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, have a look at my other social media stuff. Join all them. And uh, hopefully, I'm going to see some of your guys' creations. Um, have fun doing it. Enjoy it. And. Uh, Hopefully uh, I'll see some of you guys in World of Drift when it does eventually come out. Thanks for watching and uh, see you around.